everyone, it's Roger and Jay's here from the Disclaimer Podcast. In this episode, we're going to be talking all about sort of Marvel television for 2018. So I uh, heard quite a bit of news last week with the ABC and the Fox press tours where they were kind of giving details on what's going to be coming up. First off, from the Fox side, we've got Legion Season 2 starting in April on FX. We've also got Gifted Season 2 is returning to um, FX. It's just literally, I think, finishing this week. Um, so that's cool. We also know that in, for the next Netflix, we've got Jessica Jones season two. I think it's um, Luke Cage season two at, in like September time. So, and then from the on the sort of the ABC side, um, Agents of Shield that's still rolling along. But they did pretty much come out and say they're not doing anything else. That's all they've got this year. No Inhumans two or anything else. Cloak and Dagger I think is coming to free fall. A runaway free form. Season, free form. Yeah, we we do and laugh. It's, we do laugh at that name of that channel. It, it, it's a very silly name. Yes. Um, also, then you've got Hulu have just just literally just finishing up the Runaways, and they've confirmed that it's going to be a second season of that. So there's lots coming, but also it's kind of quite interesting that ABC have kind of gone. Yeah, we're not doing anything more. There's, but then I kind of think, well, they've kind of shuffled the deck out to so many different places. It's probably a good thing. There's actually quite a lot when you think of it. I think there's actually one more. I think the New Warriors, oh, yes. uh, it will be coming, uh, featuring Squirrel Girl, who has yes. never actually been a free uh, New Warrior, but hey, whatever. And I think that's on Freeform as well. Mm. So it might be that they're kind of sh- shifting over towards Freeform, at least temporarily as the yeah. home, with the expectation that I think more than likely Hulu or their uh, Disney yeah. XD app, the Disney video app, will be the new home for the majority of their stuff. But, yeah, given how poorly Inhumans was received and how Agent Carter didn't make it past season two, I think it's no surprise that they're not they're not going to push on ABC for no. very much. I think as well, the trouble with ABC is it's not the natural home, probably, for a lot of these shows. And as such, some of the other ones are doing a little bit. And I, I feel, to be honest, they've, they've sent out so many that it's probably a good idea that they not do anything else. And well, also, probably not start too much more new because they're going to want to reshuffle all the deck when they've got their streaming service and the Fox deal sorted out and Hulu and all the rest of it. Yeah, and then there's also the fact that um, they've got the competition over on the CW that's got a show pretty much every single night. Uh, they're doing pretty well over there. And so while that doesn't directly impact them because I don't think they go head-to-head with any of those shows... There's that simple problem that you got to worry about fans, superhero fans in particular, getting that whole fatigue thing going on. Yeah, because well, there's a ton of shows out there. Yeah, I've, I, to be honest, I did stop all the DC shows. I just got bored of them. I think I got to see. I mean, I got season four of Arrow. I just got halfway through um, Supergirl, a quarter of the way through Legends of Tomorrow because that just felt completely just unnecessary and then we also had the flash and like i was and again and then we had all the ones on the marvel side i think i did just get hit that block of going my wife just turned around to me one day and go, we're watching too many so yeah dc just yeah just i did you, know, you know there's there's a lot of shows and then you add on of course the movies on mm-hmm. top of that and there's going to be like eight or nine superhero movies this coming year it, it it's definitely easy to see why people are worried about superhero fatigue, and we're almost certainly going to reach that point at some. Now, I don't think that's going to be the death of superhero by any means. It's going to stick around as a genre, but you know, this might be one of the biggest years for superhero shows and movies, and then it might start scaling back after this because they yeah. they can't keep pushing this. I do hope they actually. I would love them actually, to be quite honest, to cut back to half, cut half of them back. And maybe make them a little bit make each show better because some of some they're getting some of them are getting a bit cheap. I well, will be honest, uh, having just sat through five episodes of Inhumans this week because I'm literally, I didn't watch it first thing and ended up just subscribing to like Now TV recently and it came up and it was like Inhumans ends in four days so we're blasting through them all and I can see why like with that is it looks like a show from ten years ago. And it, you can, it's, it's fine, but there's too much competition for some that lack to be out there. I mean, it, there's nothing special about the Inhumans. They really just kind of gave us a lazy story, 
not particularly good special effects. Now, the actors on the whole were pretty good. I, I like Black Bolt. I like uh, some of the other characters. I was... I can't remember the character's name, but the guy with the hood who was hunting the guys in the forest um, with the glowing eyes, basically yeah. Cyclops. I liked him a lot. He sounded a lot like James Spader. He did kind of sound like James Spader. Because yeah. um, I literally just watched an episode before we recorded it. That's yeah. why I can, and he was fault, so that's why I couldn't ping it. But, but, but yeah. I can see why it wasn't well received. And also, going into the mindset, I did not watch it when it was released mm. in theaters, the first two episodes. But if I had seen those two episodes just by themselves as a film yeah i'd have been like the heck is this nonsense this yeah. is so ridiculously dumb so mm. yeah they screwed screwed up a lot on that and i'm fine with them not doing a second season i do actually hope that we see some of the characters again though because yeah. there there were some good characters in it would be quite i think it'd be kind of quite good if they kind of merged a bit of it together and did like just like in some ways just did like a marvel show where they had shield and the inhumans and they kind of integrated with a few of the low end television people and there was like a, almost like a television universe but you don't you know you can mention the bigger the big guys but you kind of in some ways shield i always felt agents of shield was it was always sort of positioned as that kind of interlock between all the movies and of course it didn't really end up doing that it kind of went off to the side and it would have been nice to kind of link all them together but i mean it did for the first season or two it'd have an episode here an episode yeah. there like right after thor dark world came out you know they, they yeah. were in england cleaning up the mess yeah. from dark world and sif showed up in the later episode and stuff like that but yeah they really did just ditch that at some point and <laughs> well went off I, and did their own thing yeah i do remember specifically the uh the civil war uh, not Civil War, sorry, Captain America Winter Soldier. Well, that was when the series got good. Well, the trouble is with that series is the show had been going along, right? We didn't... St because for some reason over oh, here, Channel right. 4, ah. they hold on to it until they launch it after Christmas because they usually want to get the whole season in one go. We don't like these mid-season breaks. We don't, do all we don't handle that very well. And so, literally, I'd already seen Winter Soldier... Uh, two three months ago and suddenly the entire series just changed on a dime you know like uh, it, it didn't it's like okay you're completely gonna flip the whole tv series around but you probably should have just left that as a cliffhanger and come back it was but that's that's another thing completely that yeah that's that's down to the individual groups it it worked much better when you were watching it week to week and then civil uh sorry winter soldier came out and you get into the show and you're like oh my goodness the effects of yeah. the movie are but yeah watching it later watching it in reruns and stuff like that doesn't get the same impact yeah so. it's like watching humans and they go oh you're an inhuman and it's like um you are in the same universe where you've got the incredible hope jumping through, you know, and your Iron Man and four coming down, Hum you know, the people might not be that bothered about Inhumans at that point. You know, a couple of them, <laughs> it was just like, okay, if you could at least name drop like New York, the New York incident, like all the Netflix one do. Yeah, I mean, that was the real problem with the Inhumans was also that they've spent so long setting up uh, the other version of the Inhumans in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and then in the comics as well that you're like, oh no, these are the actual Inhumans yeah. over here. And, and it was just... Yeah, the entire thing was a mess. But going back to what we were originally talking about, on the flip side, um, the Fox shows have been actually surprisingly good. I went into Legion and The Gifted, kind of like, yeah, I'm going to give this a shot. I'm not expecting much. And by the end of The Gifted, uh, or at least as far as we've gotten in The Gifted so far, I'm just like, I'm I'm ready for the next episode of this. Yeah, um, it's actually I've now, now I've got access to Now TV. I've now got FX. The whole of Gifted are there, so that's going to be on my to watch list. Um, once I'm done with the Inhumans, let's jump on that. Legion was a bit tricky. We got about halfway through season one, and we got a little bit like I don't know what's going on. I'm I'm not sure I'm actually enjoying this. Um, where's yeah, that, I... where, where's Stan gone from the Downton Abbey? Is... <laughs> yeah, I know it. The Le Legion was. Um, it started very slow and it started very weird and I stopped watching it when it was airing uh, mm. about episode 3 or 4 and then my friends kept going no it gets really really good it gets really good and the Shadow King and all this stuff I'm like oh alright I'll wait for the whole thing to finish and I'll just blaze through it and then yeah I will say that once you get past actually probably episode 4 or so it starts to pick up really fast mm. and things start like just going 
absolutely crazy, yeah, but in a way that you can follow, sort of. Yeah, so that mostly. was going to be, I'll be interested to see the where they go with that one. Um, it's like, as, I mean, apparently there was even like a, a drinking game going on during the AB, during the last week's press event, where if they, if one of the representatives said business as usual, they would take a shot. That was becoming a bit of a, um, everyone would take it. It got to that point where they were trying to push over this idea that both ABC and Fox and everyone, they're all still carrying on as per normal business as usual for the next month or the next year. Sorry. But yeah, I, I get the consensus that really that this, that the big press event that they had, they weren't really prepped and ready and all their decisions were not based around what happened before Christmas. No, they almost certainly were just along the lines of, um, Oh yeah, we were prepared for something else and we didn't think the announcement was going to come out right then. So yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. unfortunate, but they yeah. they probably couldn't have planned for it. Because even if they'd planned for it, then who would know if the if the announcement had been pushed off? Then they'd be sitting there going, "Oh yeah, we had something to talk about, but we can't actually talk about it yet." So, yeah. but I'm sure we'll be finding out more as the year goes on. But there's a lot of Marvel TV shows coming up on a number of different networks. So you're going to need lots of different subscription services um, to keep up with them all. But there we go. That's the kind of what we're going to be getting used to. On on uh, let's know in the comments below which TV show you are most excited about for 2018 from the Marvel side. Um, you can subscribe on YouTube. You can subscribe on the audio platforms. You can give us a like. You can check us out over the website. And James, where can they find you? Find me heroiclegacy.com. On that note, guys, thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back soon. Later. Later.